Welcome to Cosmos with Cosmos. As always, I'm Mike. I'm Liz. And today we're talking Vera Rubin. Vera Rubin. Finally doing it. If you are a fan of the pod, if you've listened to a good, sh- oh God, my microphone, a good chunk of uh, episodes, then you know uh, Vera Rubin has been brought up and uh, Mike's gone on soapboxes about her. He gets very excited to talk about Vera Rubin. So it is uh, yeah, it is I the have, Fancy Physics Man Geek Out Vera Rubin episode. I have, uh, I, have strong, I have strong opinions on one award that she should have received. Yes. Um, but I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Others have very strong opinions as well. But so we're going to take a look at the life of Vi- and discoveries of Vera Rubin today. Uh, before, we, uh, before we do that, um, Liz, what are you drinking? I'm drinking what you're drinking in honor of Vera Rubin. We're drinking the Rubin. The Rubin. So, Mike, tell us what's in the Rubin. You know what's in the Rubin? It's basically a Moscow mule that's purple. Yeah, so it, uh, you know, with all Moscow mules, you have lime juice, vodka, and uh, uh, ginger beer. I was gonna say butter beer, but that's not the right. Uh, yours, I wonder if we can, if they can see. You have a cute little. Um, so you have it too. I put one in yours. Well, it just looks like a square blob. Um, yours actually looks like it, a little spaceship. You I think yours was a. It. Yours was a. Uh, no, I'll just do this. take it out. It's a little spaceship ice cube. So it gives it um, that blue uh, ice cube uh, color, but uh, is and actually the purple color as well because it's it's a magic tea. Is um, magic. Oh, it's a butterfly pea tea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, normally it is blue in color, a nice rich blue. But when you put it into some, when you include something like lime juice, mm-hmm. it turns purple. Ah, and that is what's called chemistry. It is chemistry. Hey. Yes, indeed. Uh, Jad, you, uh, J- Jad, Jad, I, <laughs> Jack, you had ads, two unskippable ads, really? I feel like we should get some kickbacks and money from that YouTube's, but we don't. I don't where's our? Yeah, for, where's our? Qualify? I don't think for. Uh, Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> anyway, um, follow us on all the things. Speaking of YouTube and social and all that kind of mm-hmm, stuff, mm-hmm, follow mm-hmm. us on all the things. Cosmos, Cosmos, except for on Twitter. X. Twitter, uh, it is Drinking Cosmos. So follow us on that. Uh, rate us on everything. Um, and of course, don't forget to uh, join us for the Hangover, which I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Uh, I think we'll just shoot the breeze. Probably talk about. Super Bowl. I don't know. Because um, yeah, we'll, we know a lot about the Super Bowl. All I know is the Niners are in it, and being and a uh, Bay Area girl, a uh, gal, uh, gal then I'm the pulling for the Niners, obviously. They, they play the Chiefs, and that's really about all, all I know, and it's um, Super Bowl 50-something. Oh, I was right in the 50s. Well, I think it's, yeah, I think it's 50-something. Oh, and, <laughs> So that means 50 to 59, somewhere in there. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, it, um, I think Usher is the halftime person. And, and if you follow... The halftime if you, person? Yeah, it's if just you the follow, halftime person. But if you follow all the conspiracy theories, uh, oh, Taylor, Taylor, Swift? Taylor Swift is going to come out at halftime yeah. with her boyfriend... Tra- Kelsey, Tra- Travis Kelsey? Yeah, whatever. one of the Kelsey kids... Um, and they're going to endorse um, Biden for president. Okay. Uh, but that's if you believe all the um, all the hype. Ooh, Jack's got a, a plum tea in honor of Lunar New Year. Yes, Happy Lunar New Year. You're Yesterday. the dragon. You're the dragon. You're the... <laughs> that's did, did we just start a war with China? No, no, I don't think that uh, that dragon impression was that offensive. Uh. <laughs> no, but happy happy Lunar New Year um, Lunar New to Year. everybody. The Year of the Dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, um, go to Wild Ixia on Etsy. Go to, go to Etsy and check out Wild Ixia. Uh, Ixia, god damn it. Are you okay? No, are you, are you fine? Did you, how much Moscow Mule did you taste? Uh, I, uh, I only had one sip of the Reuben. <laughs> um, anyway, go to Etsy. Wild IXIA, Wild yes. Ixia. Check out her shit. Wild she draws Ixia. cool check shit. Check out her uh, great art that, has, that she has there. Uh, also, check out Ron Proctor at MrProctorShow.com, and where he talks about you know education. He also is down. Um, he's down in Tucson now, right? What? 
I don't know. I think yeah, I think he's yeah, done but then he was hanging out up in Ogden. I don't, I don't know. You know, he's a he's a he's a he's a well, he's a, a worldly man. Yes. Also, <laughs> if you are in the Council Bluffs, Iowa area, check out um, Jack's Planetarium, Rolling Bluffs Planetarium. You can find out more about them at RollingBluffsPlanetarium.com. Liz and I saw a show about stalking yesterday, and it takes, part of it takes place in, in Council Bluffs, in Council Iowa. Bluffs. Like Jack! And we <laughs> so we saw a little bit of a, uh, and it, what Jack Jack wasn't the stalker, no, no or involved in any way. Um, also, yeah, I saw Ron was heading to Hawaii for business. Oh, nice. Um, also, check out the shot. Little the shot. Well, shots the strong signs down size. your gullet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when's the next one come out? We just have one come out on Wednesday. What's the what's that? Uh, and that is on SN 1987A. Hey, so I know check did it that out. Uh, another one will be dropping on In the. Two weeks. Uh, well, yeah, but based on when you're listening to this, because you know the this goes up on the pod on the Saturday after we record it, of course. Uh, so the 21st, 21st right. of February will be the next shot episode that we will need to record. Oh. Fun times. Okay, I guess we'll know what we're doing next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, as always, have rules. Um, if a puppy barks, uh, we have them actually in the room now. So, um, they might take out. If it's not the, the whole app, set, if you just see set. the camera go flying, it's because the dogs. It's, did it's it. because the one dogs, of the dogs. The dogs broke everything. They're in the room with us, hanging out. We we're hoping to avoid Jack whining from a distance. Yeah. No. Um, but they, they, we brought them. I, anyway. I, I also expect Winter to just meander in here and jump up on to Probably. me at some point. So. Okay. But anyway, if they bark, um, we'll take a drink. If Winter comes in, you don't take a drink with that unless you want to. <laughs> um, if there's any Star Wars or Lord of the Rings references, which um, there may or may not be, I doubt it. Uh, we haven't done them in a while. Um, then take a take a drink. All Maybe right. That should be the special drink. Like, you know, how Brandon's been introducing, like, a special rule of the episode. Yeah, we've only done it a couple times. I know you're excited to get to Vera Rubin. No, I, I, I it's not, it's like I, I had something in my eye. Uh, so maybe, maybe the, the special rule of the episode is if, if Winter, if win- oh, the elusive yeah, yeah. Winter makes an appearance on camera, um, uh, take a drink. Not bad. Not bad. All right. I just, I, I'm I just, glad you approve of your own drink, your own concoction. <laughs> Well, I did pour um, the tea on top, and it, mm-hmm. um, but it, mm-hmm. all right, anyway. Also, when you drink it, I don't know if you put it out, but we got a little promo for a Corpse Bar here, uh, located in Oak Ridge, Oregon, if, uh, or Deep Space Nine, whichever one you want to go to. Uh, this one is more convenient, though. Yeah, Ben, you have to know us personally to get in, so, just saying. You have to know what? Us personally to get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is very true. You can't just show up at the door. It's a, it's a VIP special uh, privilege bar. It's like the old was speakeasy. Yeah, or that's our own speakeasy. All right, Vera <laughs> Cooper, born July twenty third, nineteen twenty eight, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, I think my grandpa on my mom's side was born in uh, where was in Philly? Born nineteen twenty. Oh, maybe it was nineteen twenty five. Anyway, uh, all the greats are born in July. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, born uh, July twenty third, nineteen twenty eight. Her father, uh, Pasach Kobacheski, was born in Vilnius, Lithuania, which was then Wait. part of por- uh, Portland, of Poland. Did you say Vilnius? Uh, yeah, I don't know how else to say Vil- 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 Vilnius. Where are you? Where are you reading? Vilnius, Lithuania. Oh, Vilnius. Vil- yeah. I, I see, but I heard like Vilnius, like that's the probably Vilnius. That's probably how <laughs> yeah. I did pronounce it. Um, um, but, oh, 1920. But Vilnius, okay. Lithuania, which was then part of Poland. Um, he em- immigrated to the U.S. and was an electrical engineer at Bell Telephone. Oh, hey. Yeah. Cool. Cool. He changed his name to Philip Cooper. Wanted to anglonize it. Oh, okay. Like the Georgianis like went the Georgianis. to the Georges. Like the Georgianis. Um, wanted to make it sound a little bit more, um, uh, you know, English. So he went from Pesach Kobshevsky to... Cooper. Philip Cooper. Philip Cooper? Hey, I what mean... A... 
Go big or go home. Oh, okay. All right. Um, he met, while at Bell Telephone, he met Rose Applebaum, who was also European. Rose Applebaum. That just sounds like a 1920s, like, I don't know. Like, she she was, I don't know. I'm just right. picturing, like. Anyway, um, she was from Moldova. Um, and so Eastern European and, um, so they have that in common. All right. The bonding over they their do Eastern have that I do not know what her, um, I, I don't know if it was Rose Applebaum, which doesn't sound like it probably was. Applebaum, Rose Applebaum. If you want to make an American name. That's it. There you go. So Applebaum pie. I don't is... have any, uh, any name for her prior to that. But, uh, anyway, they met. They married, they had some kids, and uh, Vera Cooper was one of those kids. Oh, you know what? She must have snagged uh, 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 Paul, Peter, Mary Cooper. Uh, she must have snagged him with some apple bomb jeans. <laughs> oh, God. And her boots with the fur. All right, anyway. <laughs> um, in 1938, um, Vera is 10 years old. They moved to Washington, D.C. Okay. And that is where... She developed an interest in astronomy. Oh, in, in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, so she developed that interest in astronomy while stargazing from her bedroom window. And mm, so... That'll do it. Uh, if you can see the stars, that'll do it. And she says, quote, Even then, I was more interested in the question than in the answer. I decided at an early age that we inhabit a very curious world. Aww. All from star stargazing. Now, her dad... Did not want her to pursue a career in astronomy. Uh, however, though, he did foster that interest. He did foster that passion. But he didn't want her to pursue a career because yeah, like he woman did. and working. Yeah, he didn't think. Um, he didn't he think it. No, no, no. He, he. It wasn't woman working that kind of thing. He just okay. think it wasn't going to work out. Oh, her. oh, okay. Because not, not because of brains, just because no. of the way the world works. Right, male dominated uh, field. She was just going to get it kind of stomped. Right. Over so she, um, uh, he fostered that that passion mm -hmm. in her, and they built a cardboard telescope together, uh, and they used it um, to start observing and tracking meteors. Wow, what a good dad. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so she graduated from Coolidge Senior High School in 1944. And it's off to college at that point. Um, she was advised, uh, and this is going to be a theme. Yeah, she was advised by a high school science teacher mm -hmm. to avoid a career in science and become an artist. So let's see how that turned out for her. Um, all right. So right. she goes to college. Where did you she go? You don't want to do any science. Stick to some art. Be an artist. Ladies are good at the arts. So, I, as a side story, um, my daughter Stephanie was told by a boy mm -hmm. that girls can't play baseball. I went and got her a baseball bat, a baseball glove, mm -hmm. and we played baseball. I mean, I would like to see this dude throw a softball. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Freaking that. Yeah. Oh, um, God. So, um, Stephanie went on... Um, to become a to famous play. baseball player uh, in well, a league of their she own. She went on to play high school lacrosse, high school um, cross country, lettered in those, um, and this kid did nothing. Anyway. <laughs> this kid was a loser. Back to Vera Rubin. Um So she decided she's going to go to college. She goes to um, um, Vassar College. That's a women's college, right? That, at the time, that was a woman's college, a women's college. Um, she was inspired to go there because Maria Mitchell had been a professor there in the 1860s. Now, who is Maria Mitchell? Maria Mitchell discovered the comet 6, I'm sorry, C, 1847 T1. Um, it's now known as Miss Mitchell's Comet. Oh, that's fun. It sounds very Southern. And Miss I'm Mitchell. Not... It's all Miss Mitchell's Comet. Anyway, she was the first internationally known woman to work as both a professional astronomer and a professor of astronomy at wow, Vassar. Wow, wow, okay. Um, she was also the first woman elected fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. So, for her. Um, yeah, so this is in the 1860s. Yeah, that's and, uh... um, and so she was the reason why Vera Rubin goes to Vassar College. Um, 
Vera Rubin graduated Phi Beta Kappa, which is an academic honor society. She graduated 1848 with a bachelor's in astronomy. She was the only um, astronomy graduate that year. Wait, how many? Uh, how many? How many graduates were you in your physics? Your physics program? There were two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, me and Andre. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Um, the one could... other guy you graduated with. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let me take a drink here. All right, so she decides that she wants to um, now leave Vassar and well, pursue. Well, she has to. She graduated. She right. can't stay. Okay, she wants to leave and pursue graduate studies, graduate level studies. So. Right. She sends out applications. Yeah, she so applies to Princeton. Denied! Vagina. Vagina. <laughs> exactly. Um, Princeton actually would not accept women for another 27 years. She turned down Harvard. She turned down Harvard, the oldest college down. in the United States. Yes. Now, well, my, there is a reason why she turned Germany. down Harvard. Um, she had met... This dude in 1948, same mm -hmm. year she graduated. Okay. His name is Robert Rubin. Last name sounds, sounds familiar, doesn't familiar. it? Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. mm, looks like he she was... was getting a little R&R. &R. <laughs> he was a graduate student at Cornell. Oh. They fell in love. They married. And she went to Cornell for graduate school. Oh, yes. So she received her master's in uh, astronomy in 1951 from Cornell. Oh, okay. Yes, and then goes off to George Washington University um, to pursue pursue her PhD, which she did get in 1954. I wonder how much all of this uh, was costing her. Like, maybe we'll say it was a scholarship uh, to Vassar. Okay, so nothing to Vassar, mm -hmm. and then five dollars for each of the Ivy Leagues that she probably. attended. Probably. probably. <laughs> all right, so. Now, when uh, this is when uh, when you're in graduate school, this is when a lot of people do, you know, some really fun research. You know, well, I mean, yeah. you're working towards your right because you have to because in order to really get a career in like astronomy, you have to you know yeah, do this. And, you have to get your doc. You know, do all these research she, projects. If, if for a PhD, you have to write a thesis. You have to defend it, um, <sighs> um, and so it's a big deal. So. Um, um, she worked as a graduate student, whether it's for master's or PhD. So this is more I'm lumping all of them in here. She worked with uh, Mark, Martha Carpenter. She was an astronomer, and they worked on galactic dynamics. Galactic? What's, the, yeah. what's galactic dynamics? Like movement, how they interact and their... movement dynamics is motion. Oh, oh. So the motions of galaxies and so forth. She also studied under Philip Morrison, who was part of the Manhattan Project. He was also a high energy astrophysicist. She worked under Hans Bethe, Nobel laureate, dude who figured out how stars make their energy. I mean... Studied under him. Studied under Richard Feynman, Nobel laureate. Also Manhattan Project, played bongos, love strip clubs. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, to each their own. Uh, he likes, he likes uh, all kinds of bongos. <laughs> Take a drink to that one. Take a drink to that one, everyone. So she's got she's got some bona fides oh, on she's her got some resume bona fides. on she's her got some bona fides. reference list. But there's another one. Oh, George Gamow. He was a Soviet. Uh, well, originally Soviet. Okay. That's that's Russia for all. Well, our... this is all of you Gen Zers watching us. <laughs> I know we're just mid, right? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I just said. <laughs> but he then came over to America, so Soviet American, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But um, he just did all kinds of shit. He never won the Nobel Prize, I don't think. But okay. um, he figured out um, this thing called alpha decay. So it's when a nucleus and an atom just spits out basically a helium nucleus, two protons, two neutrons, just spits it out. Um, just willy nilly, just like yeah. Like a, uh, like a, you know, a cowboy in an old western just poof, yep, with pretty much. So just spits it out. So he, he figured that out. Um, he figured out this, uh, he was one of the first people to figure out this, um, it's, it's called a liquid drop model of the, of the um, nucleus of an atom. 
um, which Niels Bohr then signed on to and uh, was involved with it as well. The next time, every time now going forth that I need to use the restroom. <laughs> liquid drop? Excuse me, I gotta go liquid drop. <laughs> well, that could be anybody, really. It's not you. Oh, God, I laughed so hard, I liquid dropped. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Brandon has just joined us in chat from uh, his adventures in South America. Yep. And- Hola. Uh, he also did a lot with um, how um, um, elements are fused in stars. Um, so he, he also was very instrumental in the hot Big Bang, a big proponent of it. Also uh, figuring out when, was like, there in a cold the first. Big bang? Well, you know, at the time. Okay. They okay, weren't okay, entirely okay, sure. Okay, okay. So he was figuring out like uh he was very instrumental in figuring out like how much hydrogen and helium were made how much lithium um all that kind of stuff um and so big big deal yeah this guy's a big deal and so right. he is her um uh vera rubin's um phd advisor so she I she worked mean... under she worked under some um some big time people yeah she did Jeez. so while she was in um Graduate school, um, she observed the motion of 109 galaxies and was the f- one of the first to observe um, de- deviations from um, the Hubble flow, which is as the universe expands. Okay, all right. So as the universe expands, it takes the galaxies with it, uh-huh. and they should all be going, kind of going at the same speed. Uh-huh. However, if you look at some, some are um, going a little slower and maybe heading not. in a direction. So uh-huh. deviation. Okay. She's okay. one of the first to that figure that out. Flow. She did um, think her and some colleagues did think that galaxies moved around the pole, um, which has been disproven. A po- pole. Yeah. Like so they're pole? orbiting. So like the universe has a pole. Oh, the universe, the universe has a pole. Okay, okay. And so. Um, that has been disproven. Yeah. Um, she also proved early evidence uh, or provided early evidence for the supergalactic plane, which was controversial at the time. Basically, it is the plane of the, of the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah. We can't really see it. No, because we, we're in it. Because we're, we're yeah, in because it. we're in it, and the dust lanes yeah. block our view. Uh-huh. But you can infer there are a lot of galaxies there. Well, I mean, just look at the Sombrero galaxy. Right, and so she's we're able. At that head on. So she's able to provide evidence for um, galaxies and the supergalactic plane. Her paper was summarily rejected. Uh, and Jenner? uh No, no. It was actually a very controversial idea at the time. Oh, no. So this was legit. But... Um, what, well, I, this next part, though, is vagina. Uh, what was the leading What was the leading uh, hypothesis at the time? That galaxies were, uh, like, like, spherical? I mean, some are, uh, of course. Right, you know, right. But... So... I'm not really sure what the idea was at the time. She has been since proven correct. correct. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, we can't just see there, but, you know, there's evidence that there are these mm-hmm. galactic clusters. And she was saying that there's these galactic clusters mm-hmm. there and people just weren't buying it. I feel um, like, but, I feel like, it's a, I feel like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Like, that shouldn't, like, nothing... Or, Anyway, no, go ahead. Continue. Anyway, the paper, because it was a controversial idea, was rejected. Um, and so, rejected. But it should be rejected but, on merit and not that it's controversial. Like, is there actual, does she have shit in it that is, like, no, I agree. verifiable I agree. or, like, I good agree. evidence to I the... I agree. I agree. I know, you agree. I agree. I know. Um, she also wanted to present um, her findings at the American Astronomical Society. She had to fight. To be able to do it, um, not like physically fight, but she oh. had to really wait a minute. She had to really uh, fight to do it because she was visibly pregnant. Um, oh, God, but she did end up um, being able to present. Um, she also, as uh, as a PhD student, um, um, found the galaxies clumped together. Uh, it was controversial at the time. <laughs> Uh, is, and it's true that they do clump together. It was not pursued by other astronomers for another 20 years. We, we, <laughs> we know like nothing yet. Why are there things controversial? Okay. The only, 
today, obviously, we know a lot more because we can we have the technology to observe a lot more, you know, and obviously we know the Earth is round, so hence why controversy, no controversy over flat Earth because it's just wrong. But, it, you know, I would say pre-space telescopes, uh, like, yeah, let's put the word controversy to bed because we still don't know shit. Yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah, but but people still go into things with. Yeah, I mean, we we held on, yeah, preconceived ideas, and right. we held on to Aristotle's beliefs of things for <laughs> for <laughs> centuries and centuries. A dude that didn't have indoor plumbing, right? And and but we held on to those beliefs. Yeah. Um, it. It took um, Hubris is, Hubris does. It took yeah. uh, you know Newton to come in and change things, and then we held on to that, mm-hmm. and it took Einstein to come in. It took um, you know Niels Bohr to come in. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We 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 hold on like you know we once don't you get change we, as a species. we don't um, and also also the people that are in, that are in charge. Mm-hmm. Um, they get married to their ideas, and after the age of thirty, they they really are holding on to those ideas um, quite passionately. At times, um, anyway, she dealt with a lot of sexism, obviously in the field and at the university. Why? Remember, she is a PhD candidate. She has an advisor. Uh huh. She wasn't allowed to meet with her advisor because women weren't allowed in that part of the Catholic university. So she had to meet with them elsewhere. What? Because the temptation's too great? Because all of all these. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the zipped up uh, women, uh, Catholic guys. It's women that tempt the men, right? Um, and it's not the man's fault. It's the it's the woman's fault, isn't Shouldn't it? Shouldn't it be apples? Should it just apples? Just everybody should be tempted by apples all the time? Yeah, you would think. Uh, I guess. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, um, she did get um, she did get that degree in 1954, and she is now um, Doctor Vera Rubin. Doctor Vera Rubin, look at that. So um, she does with uh, with that PhD in hand. She goes down to Montgomery College, where she is an instructor of math and physics. She's there for a year, um, and then <laughs> she goes back to um, George Washington University. Where she starts off as a research associate astronomer, so mm-hmm. she's gonna, she's doing research. Um, then she becomes a lecturer in uh, from 1959 to 1962, and then um, advances to assistant professorship from 1962 to 1965. All right. And then she leaves George Washington University, and she goes to um, Carnegie Institute of Science. Um, and which at the time was Carnegie Institute of Washington, and that's where she stays. And she is uh, in what is, is the department she in is, is in is called the Department of Terrestrial Magnetism, which I just think is, is the a Department funny name. of Terrestrial Magn. That sounds like, uh, like you got some great terrestrial magnetism. <laughs> I'm know, really right? attracted to his terrestrial magnetism. All right. Department of Terrestrial, but uh, that seems like it's just like what the Earth's magnetic field is what that would be about. Yeah, but they study a lot more. <laughs> okay, in the Department of Terrestrial yeah. Magnetism. <laughs> um, so there she meets her longtime collaborator, Kent Ford. So, yeah, so, so anyway. Kent Ford, okay. Kent Ford. Um, I mean, I don't know who that is, so. Yeah, well, longtime collaborator. Male. I don't know him either. Kent's guy. Oh, Kent. I thought you said Kit. Like, Kit. No, Kent. Okay, Kit. Because that could go either way. But Kent. Kent. Okay, Kent. No, Kent. Kent. Yeah. Oh, like... I, Brandon said it's a subdivision of MIB, Terrestrial, Department of Terrestrial Magnetism. All right, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, Kent Ford is really a master at um, um, creating spectrographic equipment and stuff like that. And so, he creates um, some equipment that they use to um, get spectrum of well, galaxies. You know, if you don't have what you need, make it yourself. Um, <laughs> Jack says, new country song, I'm attracted to your mountain. <laughs> uh, because Vera Rubin and uh, her husband had produced at that time two small children. Uh, they produced them? 
they produced them. Out of her Hubble flow. God. Um, she worked mainly from home. Oh, so, that's nice that she had to work from home abilities back mm-hmm. then. Yeah. All right. Um, in 1963, so prior to going to, all right, so I'm going back in time a little bit, um, a couple years, 1963, she goes to McDonald Observatory, um, she worked with Jeffrey and Margaret, uh, Burbage and made her first observations of the rotations of galaxies, which are going to come back to us, um, in another decade. How long does it take to make an obvious, a confirmed observation of, I guess it's a red, uh, red shift, blue shift Mm -hmm. uh deal then yeah just because i mean i would feel like the rotating is well you got to be able to see what you have to yeah but what you what you need to be able to see are the stars oh and their shift and then you measure the amount of shift and you can then extrapolate the speed at which then they're rotating the galaxies rotating because they're just like the planets in the solar system or So they're looking, they're measuring, um, they're measuring how fast things are moving. Um, and so you got to be able to see the stuff in it um, to be able to get those measurements. Um, and, and so I don't know if they're actually picking out individual stars at this point or if it's just like, hey, this side is moving this fast and this side just on average is moving that fast. Mm-hmm. But um, that's where she's, she's making her first observations um, of it. 1965, she goes to Palomar Observatory. No women's bathroom. So what does she do? She makes her own. Oh, did she just like get a bucket? I guess. Um, she was the first woman. <laughs> Find a closet? She was slap the a sign first... on the door? Okay. She was the first woman to observe there. And made history. Goes back to Carnegie. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's working with Ford. And they find um, the what is called the Reuben Ford effect. Um, and... Um, so they're working together at the, and they're looking at the clumping of galaxies, which remember she had kind of already seen and had, had ideas about um, with her graduate work. Um, and they're looking at how these galaxies are moving. They discover an apparent non-uniformity in the expansion of the universe on a scale of about 100 million uh, light years. So, so you're, you're looking at the galaxies. Okay. Um, you're looking at a group. Well, like a right, area, and they, they right? should be moving at a certain speed. So what they did was they, they compared, um, like, how fast the Milky Way and our galaxies are moving. And then they look at some galaxies a little bit further out um, and see how fast they're moving. And then you go even further out and see how fast they're mm-hmm. moving. Okay. Um, they should be following Hubble's law. She's finding they're not. This was before dark energy. Uh, we knew about dark energy, They're but not, it's the galaxies hints. are misbehaving. They are misbehaving. Um, it was controversial at the time. Like, of course, everything's controversial. Uh, but it was shown <laughs> to be valid, and so basically, they're studying the motions of galaxies. Okay. Okay. Um, so, wishing to have a non-controversial topic of study. <laughs> I mean, then you just got to do one that's already done. <laughs> if you want to be a you know, trailblazer, you got to be controversial sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean, pretty much everything she touches has been controversial so far. But wait. Um, so, wishing to have a non-controversial topic <laughs> of study, like Ruben chooses to study the rotations of galaxies. But isn't that already controversial? No, it's the motions of galaxies that are a little bit controversial. It's the rotations of them. Um, like oh, this, that are supposed to be like, like, oh, you know oh, what? The reason, why was, the reason why they were thinking it wasn't controversial was they thought that, um, that galaxies really are just much larger versions of solar systems. Oh, okay. So, so stars similar. at the center, stars near the center of the galaxy are going to move a... They're feeling more gravity. They're going to move, move faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you get further time. out, things start to slow down. Like in our solar system, Mercury goes the fastest of all the planets. Well, isn't it not about speed, though? It's about like less time it takes to orbit the sun. And then no, it, but, it takes you, more time. but you're feeling more gravity. Mm-hmm. And so you have to go faster. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you fall in. Oh, so, yeah. oh, okay. yeah. um, so it's not so much the shortness of it. So if you if you don't if you don't even worry about 
how far away they are. If you just look at their velocity mm -hmm. um, that they are going, um, Mercury is going much faster than Neptune. It has to. It's feeling more gravity. Okay, yeah, It yeah, has yeah, to yeah, go faster. Yeah, okay. Because if it went the same speed as Neptune, it would just go poof. Right, And then yeah. no, more, no Mercury would not no, last. Mercury it. would not be here. <laughs> Um, so she thinks this is, so that is the prevailing theory, <laughs> the prevailing thought. And then the controversy comes over and goes, hey. <laughs> yeah. You can't escape it, Vera. <laughs> um, so what she does is they start to um, measure the speeds of stars um, around the center mm -hmm. of the galaxy. Okay, okay. Um, and they found, she found, that stars were moving at the same speed in the outer reaches of the galaxy as they were close to the center of the galaxy, which should not be happening. These outer stars should be going slower. And if they're going, but if they're going real fast, then... <laughs> then that means there's more then, gravity. But, well, they're going f f fast, and they're thinking that, you know, it's the whatever, same gravity, then they should, like, fly off, right? But they're not right. flying out. Right. They're and staying so, in. Exactly. So she measures their velocity. Brandon says my straw is ridiculously long. Yeah. Hilariously long. Well, okay. I need a straw. Um, I have a lot of stuff, guys. Um, okay, but you know what? we got to have fun. we got to banter. Any, so, anyway. you know, we'll sit through it. Oh, my God. I'm just... Leia, come finish the show. Leia, come finish it. <laughs> anyway, the stars, yes, you're right. They should um, they should fly out of the galaxy based on the amount of mass that we're seeing, um, that we can see. Um, these stars are moving too quickly. So, mm -hmm. for them to be able to stay in orbit around the center of the galaxy, there has to be a bunch of unseen, uh, invisible matter that they can't see that is you know there and present and keeping these stars in orbit mm -hmm. otherwise it, the galaxy would just dissolve um it would fly apart at the seams can we just all take a second um uh to just visualize a galaxy just like flying like flying I mean, apart. Be a lot of fun. i mean how cool would that look though yeah. all of a sudden it was just like yeah just and not even an explosion it was just like <sighs> that would be cool so I, she she postulated that there had to be um, this halo of matter that we can't see. Mm -hmm. um, and she, dark matter halo. She did not coin the term. That actually was coined by... By Rihanna? No, it was, it was coined by Fritz Wicke in the 1930s. Hey, um, good old Zwickster. Um, um, Zwicky had been looking at the coma cluster... Um, uh, of galaxies, and he found that galaxies are moving faster than they should. Um, it would fall, it would break apart. Um, so there had to be some in, sort of in, some sort glue. of invisible it was a cosmic glue. Yeah, there had to be some invisible matter that he called um, dark matter, uh, but it was like in French or something, and so it actually sounded a little bit cooler. But um, um, so uh, she finds um, your her her data supports. Ideas first proposed by Fritz Wicke in the 1930s. Um, and Fritz Wicke kind of laughed about, laughed at about this dark matter stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, here 40 years later, um, Vera Rubin comes in and says, you know what, maybe he's right. And so dark matter has been confirmed by radio astronomers, cosmic background radiation, gravitational lensing. Everywhere we look, now we can see evidence of, of dark matter. Um, but but Vera not Rubin, the actual dark matter yeah, we itself. Don't know. We don't know what the fuck we it is. We don't know what that is. Um, and, but Vera Rubin was... So, Zwicky was the first to see it, but he only saw it in the coma cluster of galaxies. Vera Rubin saw it in all the galaxies. So, every galaxy she studied, she noticed, hey, these stars further yeah. out from the core are going way faster than they should be. Yeah. So, there is something holding them all together which means that the Zwickster back there, when he said this about the, it, it tracks. So there's something mm -hmm. here. There's something here, guys. There's a glue here. Right. But it's not just, it's not just in this one cluster. It is, uh, it is universal. Yes. It's everywhere. Yes. Um, and so um, she calculated that there had to be five to ten times the amount of dark matter to visible matter, which is roughly true. That's it's a, ten times. It's ten times. Yeah, it's roughly ten. That's times. a lot. That's a lot of mm -hmm. excess. Yeah. 
So, Never. quote, In a spiral galaxy, the ratio of dark to light matter is about a factor of 10. That probably, that's probably a good number for the ratio of our ignorance to knowledge. We're out of kindergarten, but only in about third grade. There we go. Yes, and we're still... We're still there. We're still there. We're, still we're just keep getting held back a little bit. It, or we're slowly going... Maybe we're in fourth grade now. I don't know. What. <laughs> yeah. And so, wanting to avoid controversy, she doesn't avoid it. But um, this actually does end better for her because... Well, I mean, she confirmed is, something else that it was is already definitely said. definitely more... She's, um, she's not the first saying it. Right. Or, you know... Um, I, also, something that she was interested in, uh, Ruben was also interested in counter-rotation in galaxies. So, while she's studying stars, she's noticing, um, yeah, she's getting their velocity and all that kind of stuff. But she is noticing a few things that are going the wrong way. Woo! Just yeah. like in our solar system, we got shit going the wrong way. Yeah. Is, it, going... is it a similar... Uh... Yeah, because at the time, they thought everything... What uh, went in the same direction. Yes. And so she is the first one to find, no, there's actually some stuff going in the opposite direction. Um, and this is the first evidence of galactic murders. Oh, so that's what's caused it, is that just like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, for example, uh, Uranus rotates uh, backwards, contrary to the rotation of the solar system, which is counterclockwise, so it rotates clockwise. Uh, so and, and it's also tipped over on its side, but uh, so that means it was hit by something. Oh, you had to tip it over. To tip it over and cause it to rotate backwards. Does it rotate backwards or just okay, tip it over? Okay. Which one is rotating backwards? Okay, hold on. Venus? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Venus is upside down, so it appears to rotate oh, okay. backwards. Um, so, but everybody goes in the same direction counterclockwise around the sun. Okay, yes, but I, yes, yes, they all go so, around orbit. But yeah, I'm just making a comparison that some rotate the opposite way, meaning that they had to have been smacked right, to yeah. get that contrary rotation. So I guess that makes sense with a galaxy that if they're merging together, then your initial rotation for that galaxy gets messed up yeah, so, from that merger and so it can right. cause so, stuff to... so you do have a spiral galaxy that's rotating counterclockwise mm -hmm. and then you have another galaxy come in probably it's probably a lot smaller um it definitely is a lot smaller because the spiral galaxy is maintaining its shape oh, um, okay. and so the smaller galaxy comes in um and collides with this galaxy but it's going in such a direction that it goes around the galaxy mm -hmm. clockwise and then um, so some stars then yeah they it's get stars are going with it yep. yeah okay okay yeah um all right so we have Man. this dark matter shit and we need to try to figure out what it is and so in the 70s and 80s there was this it actually in 90s there was this thing called mond um, it means modified Newtonian dynamics. Of and so, so of course it was an acronym or right. uh, initialism. So um, if you look at um, Newton's theory of gravity, it's basically one over R squared, right? And so yeah, all it what goes up comes down. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the the equation for it, um, you, you have some shit with. Um, um, gravitational constant is a really small number right. and then you have this product of the masses of the two things but then you divide that by the distance between them mm -hmm. and you square it and so may so basically so you add a tiny two above it yes above and it. so um yeah you square the distance between them between the two objects um and so that means that if um if you if you have one ball at position zero okay. and one ball at position two, mm -hmm. they feel um, they feel a certain gravity towards each other. But if you double that distance between them, um, that the the balls the gravity they feel is now one fourth. Less. One over two two squared is one over it ends up being one fourth. And so um, the the idea at the time was you know what. Maybe that two isn't really a two. Maybe it's a 2.001. Maybe it's a 2.001. Um, 
maybe one point. The two is a lie. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so it was considered, you know. Controversial? No, but, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Word do, of the episode, everybody. Do controversial. We need, do we need, that should have been the name of the drink, the controversial. Um, anyway, um, the question was, do we need to now take a closer look at Newtonian physics and take a deeper dive into it and maybe, maybe. modify it? Yeah. Um, and the, the answer is no. Oh. We don't need to do that. No. But, um, but it could be fun to just to do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ruben, does, Ruben did have a thought on the matter. not going to care. Not now. Uh, <laughs> Ruben did have a thought on the matter. Um, she said, if I could have my, if I could have my pick, I would like to learn gravitational interactions. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I would like to learn that Newton's laws uh, must be modified in order to correctly describe gravitational interactions at large distances. So she would like for uh, Mon to be true. Oh, okay, um, okay. Uh, that's more appealing than a universe filled with a new kind of sub nuclear particle. Oh, so she but wanted... how do you feel about that? Okay, now this is this is tough because you love your Ruben, but oh my God, new particle physics! Oh, oh wow, you would rather have that—a universe filled with a new particle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, we got it's con controversial. No, your uh, feelings, I think, are. I still are love you, Vera. <laughs> uh, my my mom says she's still wondering how we know Venus is upside down. Is rotating backwards, and it's the only explanation. So I, you know, um, if be, well, no, the there. All right. So as the solar system is forming, mm -hmm. um, it starts to spin. It starts to spin counterclockwise, um, and the rotations of the planets also get part of that spin. So they are rotating all counterclockwise, that debris is going in the same direction right. as it's coming together through. It is, right. it's called conservation of angular momentum. Um, everything is going to be moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And so when you see something like Venus, which is going around the sun in, the a, in a counterclockwise direction, the uh, correct direction, um, we know that it picked up that spin mm -hmm. uh, of the early... Gas cloud that formed mm -hmm. form the solar system. Solar nebula. But when you look at its rotation direction, it's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. So some of them have smacked it. Some and so it is impossible for Venus to be going around the sun counterclockwise and rotating and then, clockwise and then form rotating clockwise. Mm -hmm. it, it it just it can't okay. happen. And so uh, physically, it can't happen. Yeah. And so what? happened was um we're really sure that this is what happened um because we weren't really there um it formed going around the sun counterclockwise it also was rotating on its axis counterclockwise mm -hmm. and then something came and smacked it now in physics it doesn't have to be a direct smack like it, actu a it actually blow. hit it 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 can also be what we call a, close, a gravitational collision. A close flyby. A close flyby, which then flips it. And now it's upside down. Hey. Um, and Venus so, is like, what the fuck? So <laughs> it could have been hit. That's a bad day for anything that would have been living there if there was, which it wasn't. Um, but, you know, you could have also had something very close to it, just mm -hmm. um, come very close to it and just mm -hmm. flip it over. Also, a bad day. <laughs> Under a side note, just just a question not to go into, uh, but like, would that have that have helped? Uh, I don't know, just increase its its internal friction for that all that volcanic activity oh, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. because of that, you have you have all these tidal forces going on. Yeah, when when something that's yeah, just a close one. So true. all you gotta do is look at Io. Oh yeah. So I mean, it's I was got really Jupiter and all the moons just making it go. I was like its own little rave. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Like, um, the uh, IO surface goes up and down something like oh, 60 feet yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. It's like Because crazy. of the tidal forces. Uh, Jack on chat says, ancient sexist astronomer review, being a woman, Venus struggles orbiting the sun because of her gentle constitution. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, yes exactly. that's exactly what it is. She's just so fragile for the sun. So, I mean, <laughs> let's just think about this for a second. Um, think it. She, she's one of the first to notice that not all the galaxies are following the Hubble flow. Yeah, how many women in astronomy are the ones that are like, she's the first to notice something that all the men are not observing? Um, okay. Typical. Um, she is, um, the, the first to really, um, figure out, at least universally, that dark matter exists. She when did they first coin the term dark matter? Was it? It was in the 1930s. Fritz okay. Wicky did it. Oh, Fritz Wicky coined dark yeah, matter. Yeah, okay, okay. uh, it, it was something French. Right, right, French. that's right, um, that's right. Okay, we got, I got, here, you, you, I'll, I'll Google the dark matter French term, because I'm curious now on what it, what it is. Yeah, French um, French. or it looked French to me. Yeah. Anyway, um, and she's also the first to. Oh, oh, uh, Metier Obscure. Yeah, yeah. Obscure, obscure matter. Yeah. Obscure Well, matter. but that means dark. Oh, okay. So, Metier Obscure. Um, and she's also the first to make um, observations for galactic murders. I mean, these are th um, some big things. So what is her legacy? Her legacy is she's the second woman elected to the National Academy of Science. Um, her, uh, um, Margaret Burbage, who she worked with um, previously on um, galactic, um, galactic dynamics, um, was the first. Um, she has been described as a guiding light for women that want a family and career in astronomy. Oh my God, that's controversial. Yes, Carnegie Institute has a postdoctoral research fund in her honor. Oh, that's cool. The American Astronomical Society has the Vera Rubin Early Career Prize. Yeah. Um, asteroid 5726, Rubin is named for her. Um, she also has the Vera Rubin Ridge on Mars. So that's nice. cool. Nice, that's neat. On November 6, 2020, NewSat 18, um, a satellite meant for actually observing Earth, I believe, um, was launched. It is called Vera in her honor. Oh. Um, she will be honored on the U.S. quarter in 2025. I want one. I want one. Oh, what? Okay. And it will be on one of our, uh, yes. Um, Real physical money. Yes. And, like, I I think it is. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> so, you know, um, um, New Zealand. Oh, God. His name. I can't remember his name. But they have um, a physicist that won a Nobel Prize on their money. Um, you know, other countries. Canada has like astronauts. It's space arm. They have a space yeah, arm. Yeah, they got cool shit on their money. What do we have? We have a pyramid with a third, with an eyeball. What well, the fuck is that shit? But we also have dead racists. Well, yeah, we got our dead racist, you know, presidents. But a pyramid with an eyeball? What? 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 <laughs> uh, in, December, in December of 2019, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope was renamed the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. Mm -hmm. It is located in El Pinon in Chile, and it will focus on the study of dark matter and energy. Hey! Um, in season three of Star Trek Discovery, the Ver Verubian Nebula, named after her. Oh, shit! I know, right? Yep. Vera Rubin. Verubian. Uh, That's cool. Named That's after cool. No, hats off. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> This has been the story of my weekend, is spilling it constantly really has. on myself. You don't understand how many we, times I spilled on myself just we had yesterday. To wash, we had to wash clothes. I she... had to wash clothes because I spilled a dark beer on myself. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Hats off. Hats off. Hats off to um, the writers on Star Trek Discovery for that, that gold mm -hmm. nugget. Yep. That little nice Easter egg to... Uh, she has won many awards. I will get into one she didn't win. I know, I know. I'm waiting for, I'm just waiting for I, I'm the really, rant. I'm really trying to not rant. I'm really trying not to. But anyway, she has won the Bruce Medal, the Gold Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society, the National Medal of Science, the Adler Planetarium Lifetime Achievement Award. What? Um, she has also received honorary doctorate degrees from Harvard, Yale, Grinnell College, and 
Princeton. Oh, those assholes. Those, <laughs> right. those dicks. Was she alive for all these? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah because that you, Princeton you one, do you accept the Princeton one, or do you be like, no, I, fuck you? I, I really... I, I'd be so petty. I'd be I like, really, <laughs> you could take your award, you could shove it up your sexist asses. But you know what? I really want to look up now her Princeton... Uh, because you have to give the speech. Oh, her so, speech. Yeah. She I just look threw, up her speech. Or she threw like some sly shade in there. She had. To. I'm sure she was a classy lady, but. Um, she died on December 25th <gasps> of 2016. She's Jesus. <laughs> well, that's oh, no, born. that's the born. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, from complications of dementia and became ineligible for the Nobel Prize despite, quote, and this is from the New York Times, ushering in. A Copernican, uh, Copernican scale change in co- cosmological theory. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, all right. So one final quote. Um, she did like to um, uh, not be front and center in a lot of things. Okay, and she so, didn't like the center of attention. She like right. she liked to be in the background, operating in the shadows. Uh, yeah, um, and. Um, but anyway, one final quote. We have peered into a new world and have seen that it is more mysterious and more complex than we have imagined. Still, more mysteries in the universe remain hidden. Their discoveries awaits to the adventurous scientists of the future. I like it this way. Yeah, she likes, you know, that not everything is known, of course. Yeah, and, you know, she has been such... She was such... An inspiration and uh, influence to um, a lot of, um, you know, female. She paved the way for a lot of female astronomers today. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there has been a lot of um, anger towards the Nobel Committee because they never. Yeah, how many women have won a Nobel Prize? Right in science. But, um, how many women have never won a Nobel Prize that deserved a Nobel Prize? Right. And, um, you know, I argue Vera Rubin is one of them. And there should I'm be not a the only posthumous one. Nobel Prize. There should be. They don't need to award the money out or anything. Right. Just a posthumous, like, yeah, this person deserves it. Right. And Just because they're dead doesn't mean that they, sh- they shouldn't be honored in some way. We honor the dead all the time. Yeah, it's and there is, um, you know, there are so many... Women astronomers who, you know, thank her for it, and they tell, they have told the Nobel Prize um, committee that, you know, they are where they are because of Vera Rubin, mm-hmm. um, and the path that she, um, she blazed, and she gracious, the whole way through, she never said anything bad about the Nobel Prize. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. She basically would when they would. You know, when somebody would ask her about it, she would do the whole Newton thing. I stand on the shoulders of giants. Oh, yes. You know, yes. so classic, you know, and classic. it's um, it's very gracious. But, you know, the Nobel Prize really fucked it up. Um, you fucked it up. They did. You fucked it up. No, I'm talking to you. You Nobel Prize think, committee people. But <laughs> look at, I mean, she fundamentally with looking at galaxies um Mm -hmm. and how and how stars move in them Mm -hmm. completely changed our understanding of what the universe is made up of yeah because Um, it's made up of basically it's made up of like what like a 99 percent of shit yeah 95 percent i'm combining and the dark energy and dark matter it's basically everything the majority of the universe is made up of shit that we can't see and don't know what the fuck it is so yeah (laughs) um but at the time at the time um it was uh after her discovery this is pre-dark energy so this is pre-1998 um uh, 85% of the universe, we did not understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, if you're looking at matter and stuff. Um, yeah, it's something, wait a minute. I feel yeah, like... Yeah, no, I think it's like 85%, no, it's five times, no, ten times. Yeah, so you're talking about 10% is visible if you're just considering dark, in, dark matter. 
and 80%, 90% is invisible. You don't know what it is. And so, um, so anywhere, we'll say 25, 75, 25% of the universe is made up of normal matter that, that makes up trees and stars and planets and <laughs> you and me and microphones and electrons that allow us to do this weird thing um, every two weeks. But, and Jackie. Uh, and Jackie. Yeah, but 75 to 85% of the matter, we don't see it. Yeah. We know that it's there because we see its gravitational influence on things. We don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> um, I would and, even say that just... Uh, I would say that even with the stuff we can see, we don't understand 95% of the universe and how it works. Just because I feel like we have we we have a long way to go. We do. Um, and, you know, and Vera Rubin finds this invisible nature of the universe. She finds that um, not everything is moving like we think it is. Um... Um, you have the expansion of the universe and you're thinking that all the galaxies are going to um, have the Hubble flow. They're all going to uh, expand at a certain rate. And she finds that's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes that Hubble flow is just unpredictable. <laughs> that there are deviations from it. Mm -hmm. um, she has looked at these galaxies and found, hey, galaxies run into each other um and yeah we got two merge. running into us right now yeah and so <laughs> they merge and here is the evidence for this these are these were paradigm shifts in our thinking mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. at the time about galaxies and about just the large scale of the universe mm -hmm. she um um, was instrumental in the idea of galaxies clumping together. And when we look at big uh, data sets of galaxies, what do we see? We see them clumping together. Well, I mean, that, but, but that seems like, like, not controversial. Uh, because it's not all controversial that, now. All that gravity, right. you would think they, yeah, they would naturally right. be drawn right. together. But the idea clumps. also, the idea also is that the expansion of the universe is pulling, is taking them out. Right, oh, right. And I forgot so, about the expansion of the universe. But <laughs> there's this whole other thing about dark matter. If you want to see where the dark matter is in the universe, Take a look at the spider web pictures of galaxies. Where the cosmic the web. Cosmic the web. cosmic web. All of these filaments and strands, um, those are where the galaxies are lining up. Where are they lining up? They're lining up where the dark matter is. And Vera Rubin found that dark matter. She found it. Fritz Zwicky laughed about it. Because of some of his ideas, rightly so for some of them. He was also an asshole, but he was know. also an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you get more, you know, bees with honey, yeah, or fly, flies with that's honey. True. Yeah, <laughs> um, but she proved it, and like overnight, the universe went from hey, everything is made out of protons, neutrons, and electrons, or mm -hmm. quarks, quarks and leptons, um, basically. And she was like, no. <laughs> no, wow. it's not. Her discovery is so profound that with dark matter, so profound that it's one of two things. It is you fundamentally have new particles in physics, mm -hmm. dark matter um, particles, yeah, or or you have to rewrite Newton's laws. Oh, we don't want which, that. No, but that is equally equally exciting. Is it to you? Which one's more exciting? The particles. Well, yeah. Yeah, but it's that's a but that's because shit. that that is because um, I I I love high energy physics and that's all about mm -hmm. particles. But you know, either one is you are rewriting physics books from this one discovery from stars yes. not going at the speeds that they, they were, they were that assumed, they should go. They were assumed to go. And you know what? That makes an ass out of you and me when we <laughs> assume the nature of the universe. Oh, so true. So true. And so, and, and, you know, she had to deal with sexism her entire life to the point where she makes her own bathrooms. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she overcame all of that. Mm-hmm. 
graciously overcame all of it. I feel like the majority of women do overcome it, and they have to do it graciously, otherwise they're labeled dirty words. Yeah, and so, you know, she did it with her head held high, Mm -hmm. um, and she should have gotten the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. She should have gotten the Nobel Prize long before she got dementia and would not have even known what the Nobel Prize was. Because at the end, you know. Oh, right, 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 um, right. And, you know, Nobel Prize, you guys fucked up. You fucked up. Um, <laughs> you heard it here, not first. <laughs> from somebody who will never get a Nobel Prize as well. So, you know, it's... Um, I I was introduced to Vera Rubin um, from PBS, the the Astronomers. Oh. And I was like, holy shit. Um, I mean, it's revolutionary. It's revolutionary work. Yeah. And and the awards that I presented, that's just a small list. Um, Of her awards. I included the Adler because of the Planetarian (laughs) Connection, but I thought that was kind of cool. Um and you know she she rewrote she rewrote the universe <laughs> i was going to say astronomy textbooks but um i like that and um she wrote the she she rewrote the universe yes mm-hmm. she rewrote the universe and um at least for 20 years until Dark energy came around and really rewrote the universe <laughs> dark energy's like <laughs> Hold my beer. Hold my beer. <laughs> Wait, you think dark matter's crazy? Wait a minute. <laughs> All right. I got an adventure for you. <laughs> All right, so I think what we do is we call it. We we'll go to the hangover where uh, Mike can further rant about. Uh... Well, I don't know. I uh, all right. Anyway, uh, join us in a couple weeks. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and where we talked about Vera Rubin, one of my astronomer heroes. Um, and love Vera Rubin, and uh, we're gonna name our first kid Vera, uh, with boy or girl, doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad name, I don't object to it. No, yeah. uh, anyway, um, stick around, uh, stick around, Vera Picard. Hey, uh, <laughs> and join us for the hangover. And if you can't do that, then join us in a couple weeks. Where it'll be a high in the sky for, for March because March. the time keeps on ticking and the seasons oh, keep on a moving. God, it just really Earth keeps, keeps on, on a rotating and a orbiting. I think that's going too quick. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Cheers, everybody.